Welcome to the Startup Grind. So one of the things is we at Startup Grind is we really want to retrace kind of your steps, your journey, becoming this successful entrepreneur. So before we get started, I'd just like to know more about Chris, your childhood, where you were born, kind of your family, and kind of that beginning start for you. Um, pretty quickly, I guess. I grew up mostly in the area here in Orange County. Uh, I went to uh, West Point for college. I spent a couple years in the Army. So um, that's a little atypical, I think, for uh, the entrepreneur crowd. Um, when I got out, I basically wanted to do about the polar opposite of the Army. Uh, so I thought tech startups seemed like a good place for me. Uh, I was a technology guy. Um, I've been involved with some startups uh, prior to leaving. And so um, you know, once I got back here, I started looking for a startup to join. And ultimately, I found myself uh, doing some tech consulting on the side, and then I ultimately found some problems along with my, my co-founders, um, Andrew and Thor, in the e-signing space. And we really liked that because it really fell under something that I'm, I'm personally passionate about, and that's um, you know, workforce automation and in general bringing us to a world where you know, people don't have to work anymore, which is something I think can happen in our lifetime. So. And can you tell us a little more detail? I know I kind of gave a little overview of SignNow, but like a little more in depth. So in case someone doesn't know SignNow, what exactly SignNow is and sure. kind of how you even got started with that. Yeah, so we had a couple of, of uh, theses with SignNow um, on what would work and what was a gap in the market. So one was um, at the time we launched, there was really nothing in the mobile uh, space yet. So um, uh, you know, there's a lot of competitors uh, online that had focused on a really traditional digital certificate model, um, which I won't go into too much detail, but very difficult to use. Um, that was sort of the standard for a while. Um, we focused on making it really easy to use and mobile-centric and mobile-friendly, uh, and that worked out really well for us. Um, and the other half of what we really did was notarization. We saw a big gap there, um, continue to see a gap there. So we, we hit basically both aspects of that, the notarization and the mobile side. Um, and mobile was really what took off um, really fast for us. We became the top ranked um, e-signing app on the App Store. Um, the, that's the Apple App Store um, on Android as well. And we really leveraged that, that mobile base um, into strong revenue growth at the end of uh, 2012 into 2013 um, when we had acquisition talks with Barracuda. Barracuda came to us as customers, so we were able to, um, we had a great relationship with them from that perspective, and we decided to team up. And we had a similar customer base and such, so we are now working together, and now I'm the GM of the a signature unit over there, and run SignNow essentially as a business unit within Barracuda Networks, uh, and we're just trying to continue to do that mission of really take paper documents, uh, make them digital, and then make solve all those little pain points that take people's time during the day uh, and make those sort of automated and digital. Awesome. Has there been one most successful decision? Like, is there just been one moment where you're just like, this was the right decision? Early in the process, it was a decision to take the money from Coastal Ventures. They were a really great partner for us, uh, and I couldn't say enough good things about them generally. Our partner over there, David Wyden, is a world-class guy, and he really uh, grew me up, I would say, and uh, was a... Uh, he and we had a really great board. Um, Sean Ellis is another person who was on it. Uh, David Wyden, though, probably gives the most credit to making me into a, uh, a uh, let's see, at least at least decent CEO um, for a startup stage. Did you have any? All startups have some time, some kind of pivot. Did you have any pivots during your startup? The biggest ones for us were around notarization. So notarization is a really interesting space. We were involved with helping to get it legalized. Um, in the U.S. So that it could be done online. So that was an interesting part or movement to be a part of. Uh, so trying to replace a physical pen and paper notary with a digital online one. And the so some of the things that would seem hard about that, like getting it legalized, we got done much more easily than you might think. The hard part about it ultimately became distribution for us. Um, it's still something I think I'm interested in and I think will happen at some point, 
uh, it's just a matter of when. Because the biggest problem with notarization is the typical notary customer, if it's an end user or, or a consumer, they only notarize once every two years or so ballpark. And at the time, they're paying 20 bucks, maybe 100 bucks if they're a mobile notary, you know, maybe more. But it's not enough money that you can acquire customers cost effectively and recoup that cost. So that's something you know, I think was really instructive and I sh you know, probably could have known better had I thought more, maybe not. Um, but just taking a look at when you're trying to sell a product, how often do people really buy that product? And can you be one of those products that people spend money on on a regular basis? Or is the ticket item really large if it's going to be uh, a rare purchase? So mm -hmm. I sort of made um, you know, maybe some mistakes there. But, um, but we got a lot done on it, and I do think it'll come back at some point. Right. I definitely agree with you on too. that. Notaries are very difficult to find if you've ever tried to get a document notarized. <laughs> How do you, you mentioned earlier competition. Um, how do you deal with your competition? Do you um, keep tabs on them or do you kind of just focus on your own thing? Historically, we haven't spent a lot of time thinking about it. E-signatures are a fairly nascent space. They are just now starting to heat up, so it's becoming more important today than it was when we started. Because when you're trying to build a market or when there's a market that's at 1% saturation, most of the time you're not competing with anyone else. Today that is starting to change. E-signatures are starting to become mainstream. So it's actually, we got the timing really right with our startup, which is something I think is, was important to our success. Because in 2011, it was basically nowhere. And 2014, just now, you know, a couple weeks into it, e-signatures are starting to become mainstream. And so we timed it pretty well that we're able to take advantage with a lot of that growth. And then now I, you know, I consider ourselves really at the top of a short list of companies that are able to provide um, you know, all the features that are necessary for business customers who are the ones that are paying for this stuff. Awesome. So we've talked about it in some of our meetups. And um, I know for startups out there, how important is a team when you first start? Uh, so I'm pretty sure everybody would say team is really important. Uh, getting the team right is is really hard. I think it was something that I spent a lot of time on, and again, I think, I think David was really instrumental in helping set my bearings. It was something that I, I had to get better at over time, at having a better quality filter of what a, an A player actually is. And now after going through it a lot, I think I did make a lot of mistakes. Now luckily, I've always been good at remedying those mistakes which basically means firing. So I do think as a CEO, you have to be really good at firing. And I think if you're doing it right and you're really good, I think you'll screw up still 30% of the time. And hopefully you can just catch it you know, within a really short period of time. So if you're good, I think you should be able to fire uh, within a couple of weeks, which you know, sounds cruel, but you know, some people you can fire within days and know it. And I've done that before. And it's not a good situation for anybody, but it wasn't going to work out anyway, so I might as well get it over with. And how did you get your original funding? Um, I know for startups, that's probably one of the biggest challenges that as a startup, getting that person to, to give you money. Um, was there any secret or how did you go about getting it and how many different people did you have to talk to before you even got the first person to, to give you money? Uh, so for us, uh, we were fortunate in that I was basically running a technical consulting thing and able to use the proceeds from that to fund our, our product development early on in Sign Now. Uh, so Coastal was our first major funder. We definitely, we had done some shopping around, but I do think we got lucky to some extent where we just really hit it off and got it right and then Coastal being a big fund, one of the benefits of working with a big fund is um, you can make bigger bets or you almost, if it's not even worth your time at certain dollar amounts. So um, they were, like I said, they were a great partner and, and landing them was, was huge for us. Much more difficult was the second round because there are many startups that run into issues on follow-on rounds of funding. So just because you raise that first one, now unless you get to, if you get to profitability, then you don't have to bother or you can show up and not need their money. Um, 
but if you're in B2B SaaS, like we are, you tend to burn a lot of money early in the product cycle and your revenue is very backloaded, uh, which means you need to raise you know, quite a bit of money and more than, certainly for B2B SaaS, you almost certainly need to raise more than $2 million. So we go, when we went back for our second round of funding, that was a much more difficult one because we had as many you know, negative signals as positive signals. I mean, the data is real at that point, so you're not just pitching a story and some super early positive signals, you're, you're in the, the weeds of things. So that was one where I probably did, you know, uh, 50 to 100 investor pitches up in the Bay Area um, and then down here. And that one was, was a much bigger grind. Um, that was in the summer of 2012. Uh, yeah, I'm getting my years right. <laughs> and luckily I was able to get it done. We had term sheets signed right before my wedding and we closed over my honeymoon. Um, so That's a great gift. It was not the most <laughs> relaxing of, of trips, but it, uh, it all worked out. Awesome. And we had a great group of investors come in that round too, including Kosla. Right. So. Are there any tools or resources that were that you found helpful during your process that might be helpful to an entrepreneur or startup company today? I think AngelList is great and really revolutionary. I, I do think it won't get you your first dollar in, but I think it, it can get you to, it can help you close rounds. When we were looking at doing another round around the time of acquisition, we actually had some people reach out on AngelList and stuff like that. So I know it can work. I didn't actually raise money there, but I think if I were to do it again and I wanted to raise a round, I think a potentially really easy way to do it would be to, and I know other people that have done it too, that you know, you, you raise your first money, you sort of put it up on AngelList, you get some traction, and they can help close out your round, um, which is nice. But first money in is always the hardest. So you talked a little bit about um, advisors and mentors that you've had that have been really helpful. Is there any best practices in finding mentors or advisors? I mean, I, I know that that's kind of a challenge and then finding the right person. Um, you can meet a lot of people and not find the right, the right person. It might take a few, but is there any advice that you might have that could help someone find a awesome advisor or mentor? Startups are still largely an art because they're not enough of them out there to make it a science. And this trade-off on what you do as your time as a CEO is one of those things that's a bit of an art. You employees build companies, not advisors. But that said, uh, I think it is important to spend some amount of time investing in getting a good uh, advisory board together to help really just teach you to help you hopefully avoid mistakes and to make introductions those are probably the, you know the main things so if they can make hiring introductions um, or or you know uh, capital introductions you know venture capitalists or etc now actually finding those people I think that comes down to mostly having a great idea a great vision and that's where I think the most important thing is focusing on a big problem. If you focus on something really, really cool, that someone, that you can get meetings. I've had very good luck historically, even just cold uh, in-mailing in LinkedIn with a very targeted message talking about something really interesting to that person. So I think if your company is, um, is doing something novel and really trying to change the world, and you can talk to that story really well, then I think you can get a meeting with just about anyone, just about. Now, you, you have to know the person and you have to know that they'll like, that they're in the right stage of their life and their career that they're gonna do that sort of thing. Do you have any regrets? Or maybe no, something I mean, that, that you wish you had done a little bit differently? No, I think we, well, I shouldn't say no, but, uh, Nothing catastrophic, uh, luckily. I think you could always do things better. I think in you know the biggest thing with startups in hindsight is you end up spending a lot of time on things that don't ultimately matter, but you don't always know what those things are in advance. So, and that's I think the core of the lean startup thing, right? Is trying to minimize the waste the t you know, time you spent on dead ends. 
Um, at least that's my short version <laughs> of it. So we did a pretty good job of minimizing the amount of time we spent on dead ends. We took relatively big swings at the notary market and, and such, which is probably the big was the biggest sort of push in that direction. But luckily, we, we for the amount of time we spent on it, we moved really, really quickly into it uh, and then on to, uh, I think, really focus on what was working. Awesome. Can you share something that worked really well for you that you think other entre entrepreneurs could learn from? So, with any particular domain that you think would be most interesting, so <laughs> with, I've always found it to be, when you're creating your vision, I think I've always found it important to think really, almost ethereally, at, to start. So you can really craft this story around what you're trying to do and what type of dent you're making in the universe. Because generally the type of people um, that you're talking to who are going to invest money into your company are the type of people that will find that interesting as well. At least that's been my experience. Now you also have to be able to, you spend like 30 seconds on that <laughs> and you get them to buy into that and then you spend a lot more time in the weeds. So you have to have that as well. Um, but I do believe that a lot of tops down thinking about how you are affecting the world is important. Uh, and plus, just in reality, you're going to be grinding through it for you know the average uh, startup length to from for successful companies to exit is seven or eight years. So what are you going to be doing for the next eight years? And you, I think it's much easier to do if you care about it. Right. Uh, in our in our case, it's you know. It's creating a lot of efficiency, you know, and you, you, you're, you can be a small piece of a larger vision, but in our case, it's creating a lot of efficiencies that ultimately, you know, replace people from having to do some, you know, menial task like carry a manila folder around an office. The last question I have for you tonight is what's next for Chris Hawkins? What's plans or goals that you might have? Yeah, so... Um, after, you know, the, we were acquired by Barracuda Networks, which has been, a, it, it's a great story there too, uh, and I'd almost be remiss if I didn't share at least a little bit of that. Uh, so they were a, a couple of founders, uh, they did a startup through the dot-com crash, and then immediately in the ashes of the company started a new one, and that was Barracuda. Uh, we're attempting to be a, a, an ISP and, and became a, and actually had this Anaspam product as a part of that, but ultimately the Anaspam thing did so much better than everything else. They said, ah, forget about that, we'll just do this. And then they built the business on those legs and they almost it really never even, even really needed to raise money, although they did raise some from great investors along the way, all the way up to IPO. So by the time we entered the story, we um, are one of their product lines and they're trying to make things really easy for um, IT staffs and take this traditional IT products, which are very expensive, cumbersome, hard to deploy, and make that really, really easy um, and again, it's, and I think what we get to do with them at Sign Now is they're just putting more resources into us so we can grow the business. And I think that's pretty interesting. Um, so for me, it's much more about working at scale than it is about being standalone or my own boss or, or anything like that. Um, I like to make an impact, and so they're helping me do that. Um, so I'll be on with them for uh, for a while here. Uh, I'm a GM over there, so we get to do a lot of fun stuff. We get to, we basically get to be our own little startup. Uh, so my day to day job is really not that much different, except I don't have to go fundraise anymore, um, which is nice. <laughs> um, uh, so that's great. Well, I want to thank Chris for coming and launching Startup Grind here in Orange County. So if we could all give him a great big round of applause for coming out here.